Hey guys, let's see this in action and look at everything for the terminology as far as we've gone up to. And I'll be toggling back and forth in the screen to kind of jump into one thing and then show you guys in QuickBooks the other. And what I'm going to do is, um, if you haven't already, you guys need to create a QuickBooks online accountant profile and it's completely free. Once you've logged in and this is how you know you've created one, you'll reach kind of a desktop that looks like, oh, hold on. <laughs> Let me share this one. I forgot you guys can't see it. It'll look something like this. All right. And all you need to do is you need to come over here to the gear icon, click on this guy, and go to the sample company. We are going to be using the sample company for a lot of our drills, for almost every single one of them. And um, this is something that you guys can use for free yourselves while you're trying things out, while you're getting your hands all dirty and kind of exploring QuickBooks yourself, if you haven't already done so through the accountant profile portion of like QuickBooks Online. Again, this is the accountant profile, not a user profile. If you do end up finding yourself in a user profile, you're just not going to see what we're seeing on that desktop. You know, you're not going to see that part. So let's go ahead and jump back to my um, intro screen. And I'm going to pull up, let me scroll back real quick. I'm going to kind of start with the terminology sheet and we're going to kind of like toggle back and forth again um, through QuickBooks. And one thing I want to mention is, again, if you feel like you want to take the QuickBooks online certification courses, I highly recommend that you do. This complements that course to help break into more of the bookkeeping skill set, not just the software alone. So you'll know, again, if you're in a QuickBooks accountant profile if you see this accountant um tools here at the top it's the one that has you know this little briefcase and all this fun stuff so this is going to be something that holds all of our quick links and all the things that we use and can um access as just an accountant uh profile. Uh, things like reclassify transactions in bulk. Uh, we can look at that later. Voiding and deleting transactions, um, undoing reconciliations. Those are going to be things that a QuickBooks online accountant profile can do only. Only. Not a normal regular user, not even the, the administrative user, not even the, the master user of a QuickBooks company. The accountant is the only one that holds this, I believe. So, um, I'm going to first jump into the chart of accounts. Uh, if I ever jump into any new QuickBooks, the first thing I'm looking at is that I'm looking at their chart of accounts. And this is a sample company. It's based on a uh, landscaping and a design company. So it's very, very robust for what we need. And it will help cover a lot of other businesses that you guys have and that you will um end up getting clients for a majority of them at least. All right. So as we scroll down, um, one thing I like to do here is I like to click on those three lines there and kind of completely open up the screen. I'm also going to stop the video so that my big head is not blocking everything. All right. So let's see, let me move my other little toolbar here out of my way before I jump into this. So, as you guys remember or can recall, I talked about how the how the balance sheet, and I'm going to go to this one here, how the balance sheet goes assets, liabilities, owners, and then um, the income statement or aka profit and loss goes operating revenues, operating expenses. You guys see this, right? That's the GL and the chart of accounts. That's all of this. It's all the same thing, and it's listed in that order of of accounts. It's not just like in order by alphabetic alphabetically. Yeah, it's not in order alphabetically. It's uh, in order as per accounting necess necessities. And you'll find that I think it's pretty standard across all softwares and all accounting methods. So checking here savings. So these are all the assets. As you can see, assets, assets. It tells you here what they are. Even though this is accounts receivable, this is an asset, right? Because anything that a company still has yet to collect on, that's what that number represents um, in the QuickBooks balance. And this is the bank balance. If you have a connected bank 
um, connected to QuickBooks. You'll see the little arrows like that indicating that it is connected and you should see a bank balance there. So everything, sorry, my mouse is kind of all over the place. So everything you see here on the QuickBooks balance is what's on our GL and our register. And I mean everything in the history of this account, not just by date, it's the entire history from beginning to present and wherever that beginning happened, two, three years ago, two months ago, whatever. It's everything. So I don't really work off of the chart of accounts when I'm working in QuickBooks. This is just to show you what I'm talking about if you're brand new to QuickBooks and you wanna look for the chart of accounts, this is where it's at. Um, you go down, see I pass through other assets, fixed assets like that, the vehicles, we talked about that. You guys can kind of just jump in and see what, what this looks like. Equity, view the register, again, register and GL, same thing. And let me just get rid of that. And there you go. You guys can start to see in the account, whether it's, you know, last month, prior months, all of it's here. So I don't like to work out of QuickBooks um, in the registers at all, unless it requires a special kind of troubleshooting. But again, this is just to show you where these are. You can come here to create new accounts. So like now that we're getting into expenses, right? Legal and professional expenses. This is all gonna be found on the P&L now. Um, and that stops at, let me just go back up. I went a little too fast. You see income, 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 income. It stops after equity. So everything from this moment and up, or this line and up, that's gonna be the balance sheet. Everything from this line and down is gonna be the income statement or P&L. So here's the income. And then followed by the expenses and cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold is also found on the P&L. And if you wanted to say, um, add more here, you guys can add more, you know, say it's bank charge fees, uh, bank charges and fees. Uh, maybe you want to be more specific and you want to be, a, uh, you want to start documenting which fees or your like credit card fees. And these are bank fees. Say we wanted to do that. You, instead of just having just bank fees, we want credit card fees. You guys can just come up here, click on the new and go through this little toggle off to the right hand side and just fill out a brand new one. You can easily type in credit card fees and feel free to play with this. Anything that you do in the sample company will not be saved when you leave. So you can make all kinds of crazy things. What was it? It was um, an expense and it's, I'm going to just leave it as a credit card fee. Detail type, bank charges, bam. Description, I can write it in here as credit card fees. Um, or I can, how about instead of rewriting the account name, I can just write fees charged by credit card companies. Not bank. All right, and it'll show you what, where it's going to pop up on this chart of accounts, which is also going to be the PNL because you see here it says PNL. That's where it's going to show up, and in the PNL, it's going to show up as uh, alphabetically once you get to the expenses. So you can easily save here, add as much detail as you need, and as you like. Um, and we're just going to scroll down to where I can see this. There you go. So now you have the bank charges up here and then you have the credit card fees down there. So add as many as you need. Like I said, in the beginning, lots of people are like, CC, can I please get a copy of a chart of accounts that you did for, you know, XYZ company? I don't make a template for this. There, there's no need. You can add as you go. You can add as you, there are different ways to add new accounts and you don't have to just come straight to this chart of accounts. You will have other opportunities and I'll sh not show you now, but I'll show you later where you guys can add new accounts when you're in different windows or different parts of transactions. Um, from here, I'm going to move us over to the uh, reports and I'm going to open up the balance sheet where you guys can start to see the different kinds of reports that house those accounts. 
I end up going here, most likely, if not first, if not the chart of accounts, because I don't work out of the chart of accounts, because those numbers are not frequent to what I might need at the time. Nobody hands the, excuse me, <clears throat> sorry, the whole voice thing. The reason why I don't use the chart of accounts is because I firmly believe that, uh, let me make sure you guys can see me. Hold on one second. Let's go back. Oh, I don't think you can see me. My head's on a different screen, so I'll just keep myself off. It's fine. Um, the reason for me not working there is because I like to work out of the reports that I'm sending over to CPA, the reports that matter to tax uh, filing. And it's not the chart of accounts and it's not the register. It's these two here, the balance sheet and the PL. So they're usually at the very top and they're favorited because they're used almost exclusively all the time. So they're very frequent. And you can see here's the assets all the way down to fix then liabilities and equity because remember the liabilities and the equity and the assets the reason why it's um, a balance sheet is because the total assets will equal and i believe we said liabilities minus um sorry <clears throat> i always mess that up it's the hold on hold on One day I'll remember this. I just always forget. I say it backwards. The um, <laughs> the equity is the liabilities subtracted from the assets, but the equity is included with the liabilities on a balance sheet. There we go. I had to go back to our notes on our terminology cheat sheet because it's confusing when you see it here in the balance sheet, right? You're like, wait, uh, wouldn't you think that assets and liabilities would be grouped together? In fact, no, it's not. The assets are grouped as a total here and liabilities will be grouped as a total here so if you take a look at this total assets keep on going total liabilities and equity they will match they'll be the exact same balance that's why it's the balance sheet okay but then you'll see here that these are all uh, liabilities 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 and you'll have total liabilities. That's when you know it's time for the equity. And say you're working with an owner that uses their own personal expenses, so you need to create owner's expense um, or owner's equity where they're doing owner's distribution and owner's uh, contribution or investment and um, uh, what do you call it? Payouts, uh, well, I can distribution. <laughs> but you can add it here if it's not already part of the chart of accounts and not already on a statement. I highly recommend we do that. And you'll see here um, in my AP curriculum where I go over that and um, talk about, you know, what owner's equity is more about, at least when it comes to the balance sheet. Let's go back. Actually, we can just click here. And we're going to open up the PL so you guys can take a look at that. All right, and if you didn't already notice that here at the top, uh, this is where we can customize our views and our dates and things like that. So feel free to play around with that. And again, um, if you are gonna take the course for QuickBooks, what is it called? The blanking, my goodness, it's been a long day already. Um, but the course for their certification, they do go over you know, little tidbits like this. I'm not sure if they exactly go over like teaching you step by step. I, I feel like they'll just say like, this is customizable. This is what you can do, and what you can't do. Honestly, that's the whole point behind the company, like the sample company that you get to play with is that you can get in here, try new things, play with it, mess it up and then close it and it resets itself. So you don't even have to worry about messing anybody's real books up, any client's books and testing it out. I even like to use a sample company as a test run. If I'm trying something out for my client and I'm not sure if it's gonna mess up their books, I'll try it here in the sample company first. So that's a little tidbit special there. Profit and loss, you'll see here is the income. And then here is the total, you got cost of goods sold right after, then gross profit. 
Now we jump right into the expenses right after gross profit. And you've got all these wonderful expenses. We'll even pass by, where did it go? No, we're still on, no, we're not there. Where's those bank fees? Oh no, maybe I passed it. Oh, let's, well, it says January 1st, right? October 8th, I thought I created one. Oh, I know, it's because there's no total in it. That's why I can't say it. So it's all the totals. If we recorded something as a credit card or bank fee, uh, if it's not already in here, it's probably because it's zero. So that's why I can't say it. Duh. All right, so this is what it looks like. And then you come down. Like I said, the net income, a lot of business owners are very comfortable seeing this because then they're like, oh, this is how much I made in that month. You know, they usually want to know this, the bottom line of net income. So this is usually the statement that most people are familiar with, which is okay. Okay, let me jump back to where we're at here. And I'm going to get us through another piece of this. So now that you guys know where to look, what we're talking about, you guys can look at this terminology cheat sheet and look at all of the terminology and go back and kind of get your hands dirty and make, you know, transactions um, categorized to, to these accounts or just kind of see where I was at and kind of click into things. You guys can click into the totals that are on the reports and sort of play with it. Uh, again, this is just for terminology purposes. I don't want to crack into it all the way yet because that can be a whole nother rabbit hole. And, you know, you guys don't have a lot of time to waste. So this is why it's a boot camp. We're trying to chop, chop, right? But I wanted to make sure that you guys are also understanding as we're learning. All right. So I showed you guys chart of accounts. Um, organizing the chart of accounts per a company's business. Uh, just like I did with the credit card, you guys can do the same thing. And um, I'll do just like a very, very quick um, show of this. Let me also stop my recording real quick. That way my face is out of the way. All right. So if you want to go back to the chart of accounts and you're like, Cece, how do we do that number thing you're talking about? How do we do the organizational thing you talk about? It's as simple as going new. And I'm just going to go over just a quick one. Um, Let's go um, marketing, marketing, um, travel. Oh, I can just put maybe, how about, I know that they have, they probably have travel in here. Hold on. I don't know what I'm doing here. Why don't I just type it? Let's see if they have travel. That's just not travel. Good, they have travel. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create marketing travel account type it's an expense and then i'm going to make it a sub account i also have to collect uh select the detail type uh what did i say marketing travel so i can come down it's travel the parent account is going to be travel and i can even put marketing department like that and I can write the ex um, expenses from the all right we can save that and you can see now it'll show up like this travel even on my PL, as well as here in the chart of accounts. And then it'll have a little space. It'll be marketing department travel. Save. Bam. Same thing. So I can go in and I could do the same for sales. Let's put sales department. You guys are getting probably the picture here. And this comes in handy. Like I said, you can do it here in the chart of accounts, but there are other areas where you guys can do it, like on invoices, on bills, or in the bank feed itself. And we're going to go over that here in the other curriculum pieces, but 
right now I just try to give you guys an idea of how to play around in this sample company and what to kind of look for. You guys can fill this out or not. It's completely up to you. I always say the more details, the better. It doesn't hurt. So if you ever came back, you know, there's no questions. I'm just kind of rushing through it just so you guys can see the examples there. All right. And if it had a balance, this balance will show up very similar to this. Um, like on the PL, it'll say maybe travel total is $2,000 and we have a thousand here and a thousand here in sales department. So that way your client can see, you know, and it's a little more, uh, what's the word organized. Also, if you wanted to, um, add numbers, this is, a, this is, um, let me see. This is a setting that you guys can set up, I believe. And let's look for that there. Hold on one second. Let me find it and take you guys there. Okay, found it. Advance. Go down to the chart of accounts. And where it says enable account numbers, this is where we're going to put it in. And then show account numbers. So say you're like, CC, I love the account number thing. I want to do it. Perfect. So what we're going to do now is we can go in here and we can assign numbers to this. So travel, let's say it's five, right? Um, should have a number here. Hold on. Let me refresh this. Give it a sec. Let me push pause so that you guys don't wait. <laughs> Push pause before I finish my sentence. All right. Usually there's a number thing here, but in the event that it's not doing that for me, usually they have like a section, an actual field that says number. But in this event, if it doesn't, it's as simple as this. Easy peasy. Sometimes it doesn't work out for me when I'm doing examples. Uh, Say so we do five, one, two, five, one, two, just like that. And that's travel, right? Cool. And then now it'll be a sub account of travel. So I'll put five, one, two, five, ten. And then the next one under will be. 20. See how the parent account says 500, 500. This is, and the other one before, uh, the one before this is 500, 510. Those will be 500, 520. Bam. So now it looks like this. So when I go in and I start to maybe create, um, say just a transaction where I want to make sure I select this correct travel. And I'll give you guys an example, just a real, real quick one. Um, let's go to the bank transactions. I can simply come in. Oh, let's get rid of this. And if I was just to type in the account number here, 500, bam, these pop up, right? But if I knew specifically it was 500, 520, then I won't be able to mess that up. Got it? So you'll see 500, 500 is the parent company. The little colon indicates that it's the parent company. It's, you know, uh, connected to that company or that account, I'm sorry. And then the 500, 520. So that's what it'll look like. All right, so I hope that helps and that makes sense. Let's move on. Now coming back to our slides. Uh, let's talk about the journal entries and um, I'm just going to show you where to find it. I will cover more of the journal entries when we talk about our debits and credits in the next section, but let's jump back over or, and um, I'm just going to show you where to find it and it'll be here. Quick links, journal entries. If you're doing accounting um, in the accountant's profile, that's the best and fastest way to find it. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We will be going through a lot of different styles of journal entry here later in other curriculum. Um, I do believe if you select plus new, it's here in the other. So the one 
kind of weird thing about QuickBooks is there are different ways to do one thing. And um, I also think that that is one of the reasons it makes it so hard uh, to keep uh, QuickBooks clean. And one of the reasons why it's so easy to mess up your QuickBooks is because QuickBooks allows the user to open a different transaction up a, a different way or put it in, you know, differently. And it doesn't warn you that you could be messing up. So it's kind of the plus that it's so easy to use and there are different ways, but it's also kind of the negative as well. All right. Uh, the general ledger is the bank register, as I had showed you before, that's on the chart of accounts. That's where we guys, we can access that, guys. So the common terms and info to get used to, we talked about the accounts, the invoices, the bills. This one here, <clears throat> products and services, excuse me, take a sip of water. The products and services, this is the part I really wanted to talk to you guys about because this is the hidden sub account of the chart accounts. This is where you can't see. And I wanted to explain a little more about that. So let me come back in to QuickBooks. And um, let's first, as you know, an example, let's look at all income. And let's just go ahead and look at design income since it's one of our main first ones, except the billable expense account. I don't want to use that one. All right. So I'm going to use design income as our example. Now, design income just has this one on the chart of accounts. And remember, if it's on the chart of accounts and we can see it here, then it will be on our P&L. That's just plain and simple. However, Products and services, remember design income, write that down if I lose you. Um, go over to sales and you're gonna click on products and services. You will not find design income in here solely. It says design, right? You, you just saw it at the top. But design income isn't actually a word here, it just says design. So um, users that are not used to QuickBooks are gonna say, oh, it's just this. It very well could be, but it also could be other things. So we can simply check it by going to edit. And you say, oh, okay, it says design, it says design. And that's fine, but it needs to say design income here. That's the correct terminology because this income account is what shows up on QuickBooks or on the p and not QuickBooks, this is QuickBooks, silly me. Let's say for instance, let's give ourselves Another one. Let's go with pest control. And say for whatever reason, pest control was on the wrong one. Pest control is on a different income account. See where it says design income? Say it was there, save and close. Remember the word pest control. Very easy to remember, right? Pest control and design income. So now, they're still separate. It didn't move up here in this part because it's not part of that category. It's part of the pest control category. But you can't tell from this screen that it's actually on like what what income account is it on on the PL. That's where we're gonna jump into here. And we can we can go in and we can see, hold on, um, for charter not charter accounts, but um, let's let's do some do some work here where I can kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. So you guys can see some balances. I need some balances in here to show you. Okay. So let's say this, this is money received. So th these are sales, which is part of sales products and services. I'm going to categorize to two of these. Um, oh, hold on one second. You're going to find it here. Actually, can't put it in here because it's a, the account. And if it says account, that's going to be the chart of accounts. And again, you're not going to find it here. I guess this is a good place to show you guys, <laughs> but you're not going to find it here on income. Where is it? Income, income, income. See, so it just says design income. It doesn't have the little sub accounts because they're not there, they're hidden because I put them as a products and services. You're like, Cece, I'm not getting it. What are you talking about? Let me show you where it's at. So I'd actually have to create an invoice to show you. Uh, 
I'm just going to scroll down to this portion right here. See here where it says products and services, it would need to be put in here. So let's just quickly create a customer. I'm just going to select my first customer just so we have something. Okay. The products and services. This is where I can put design in. Okay. So it's $75 for design. Cool. Cool. Actually what I want it to be is, oh, I wanted it to be the total. Hold on. Leave without saving. Yes. Sorry guys. Hold on. Let's go to bank. Bank transactions. I gotta, oh, I'm already here. Sheesh. So I need 55. I need the amount for 55 and I need the amount for 200. Okay, cool. Because I want to make sure I show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, and I don't lose you. So again, now I'm in invoice and I'm going to select this for $55 for design. Cause there it is. This is like what we saw. And I'm just going to change the rate to 55 so that I can pair it, save and close. Then I'm going to create another one. I guess I could have saved a new, <laughs> probably would have saved me just another step, but that's okay. And the other one's $200. And this is purely just so you guys can see that products and services. Pest control, we're going to put 200 and no tax on this one, just because I want to make sure that they match. Save and close. Awesome. So now that they're there, you see the invoices that I created are have been found. So I'm just going to go ahead and match it so that those numbers go into the books and on my reports. That way you guys can see that even though I put them in the correct product, they aren't they are still not going to show up on the PL as, oh, not that one, sorry, as pest control and design. So it's under design income. And just go ahead and click on that. Let it refresh. Maybe that's what it is. It's just taking too long to refresh. And I'm not patient enough. Let me move this up so you guys can see. And there are the two. Um, accounts. Oh, gosh, wish it wasn't so big, but they're the 55 that I created and the 200. And even though it says pest control services, this was the um, product and services. And then this was the product and services, right? So you see that it hadn't been broken down here on the PL, but it's broken down in QuickBooks itself. So if I was to click on the pest control services, it's under design income. And so if you don't, as a bookkeeper, have this organized or have this understanding, this is where people will have the wrong reported numbers on their reports and you're not sure why. So this is good to know for auditing purposes for your own work. So you're going to personally audit your own self or when you're doing internal audits for your clients. Because you see, here's the pest control services. Here's what we we're talking about. Um, but in order to change it, say you need to go back and change. And you're like, CC, okay, great. I got it. But how do we switch that back? It's as simple as going back to the products and services. And then we're going to go down to the pest control. I find this a lot happening when I'm doing cleanup. And the income account was wrong, right? So we need to put it maybe, where was it? It was pest control services. Got it. Okay, so now we're going to save and close. And we're going to go back to the PL, and you'll see that that is no longer in the design income. It'll be part of the pest control income. So you can see here, this is the design income. It won't be there anymore. Scroll down here to the pest control income. And you'll see, there it is. Let's scroll over. There's the 200 because we fixed it. So I hope that makes a little bit um, more sense. And you guys can kind of play around with this. Uh, again, there's uh, more of a deeper dive into this when it comes into cleanup. I notice this a lot in cleanup, which is why it's part of this curriculum, especially part of understanding the intro. All right.